All right, everyone, gab.com is back online. Quite important as a result, uh, the only link in the description is literally the, uh, the my gab page there. You should definitely sign up for the site if you haven't. Uh, if you want Twitter without the censorship, that's basically what it is. Now, of course, for, the, for anyone that's not aware, gab is the site that was depersoned. Uh, deplatformed web wide because the synagogue shooter there, the never Trump synagogue shooter, uh, made some posts on Gab that were edgy and then finally posted about screwing optics and, and doing what he did. Now, apparently, uh, no other site is held accountable for, you know, the content, uh, the, the platformed uh, user content. Because Gab has made it clear they're a platform. They're, they're not trying to straddle that fence like all the big uh, Silicon Valley firms. They always straddle the fence between publisher and platform. They want the benefits of both without the responsibilities of either. They don't want to be a full platform because they can't censor things as effectively. They don't want to be a publisher because then user material has to be directly manually gone through with a fine tooth comb because they could be legally culpable. They don't want to have to do either of those things. They want other people to make the content but also not be culpable and be able to censor at the same time. Gab has made it clear. They believe that they are fundamentally a platform. Uh, they are not culpable for, for the synagogue shooter or any other illegal content. They do conform uh, to the law. Uh, they've gotten a new domain registrar and host and everything else under the sun now. And so after a week of people not being able to access my Gab content because of the, the work of one psychopath, um, thanks, you know, in part to groups like, you know, we, we can name them off the BuzzFeeds, the Politicos, the Slates, the Huff Posts, the Voxes, the Wall Street Journals, the CNNs, the Atlantics, the New York Times, all of those scumbags that don't want to have to compete with alt tech and the alt media. See, the reason why, I'll tell you exactly why they would go for Gab. Gab is a quickly rising platform and they know that it's not like, oh, white supremacy Nazi land or something. There's like 50,000 Brazilians on the platform. A bunch of people from, I guess, Morocco also migrated there because Twitter was cracked down on. What it actually is, is that Gab enables their competitors to promulgate information more quickly without algorithmic manipulation like you get on Twitter. With Twitter quickly destroying itself because, you know, Jack thinks it's a good idea he's going to remove the, the like function maybe, constantly shadow banning and alienating people, Gab has been, their, their operative strategy is to exist and allow Twitter to destroy itself. It's beginning to look like a smart strategy. What's happened? is that those big uh, media conglomerates, entertainers, you know, the, the, the Fallons, the late night crowd and everything, the lame streamers, the people who have stopped being funny, entertaining, or newsworthy, um, they use Twitter and sites like that to, to push their material. They're just beginning to push people aside, like on YouTube. You get all this special paid content, YouTube premium, and fucking partnership deals with CNN and, and with big time comedians and stuff, slowly pushing independent creators aside. The biggest threat, therefore, for that lamestream audience that's bringing that content there and bringing in a lot of branding deals and money, therefore, to these platforms is, is an independent upstart that does what they used to do, which is 99% of all the user content was always independent. Now, that's happening. It's beginning to happen with, with sites like BitChute and Steemit for video hosting. It's beginning to happen with sites like Minds for, for social content. But for that snap sort of instantaneous transfer and promulgation of material, it's always been Twitter that's been used. It's, it's the fastest of these sites, uh, fundamentally. It's not as interesting, like I prefer the video format, so I like YouTube, but what can be done in, in 10 minutes of, of uploading and making content, putting it on YouTube, um, can be done instantaneously on, on Twitter and, you know, what is it, 200 characters or whatever or less. Gab is replacing it. Gab has a higher character limit. Uh, Gab is branching out into sort of the streaming uh, capabilities as well as short videos and stuff like that. And it's not censored. And so all of the people that have been alienated successfully off the lamestream platforms, in other words, all of the interesting people are slowly flocking to alt tech. So they targeted Gab. Uh, I would encourage though that you use it. I've got now 18,000 people following me there. It was 17,000 and something before the, the purge of Gab. If you look at trends, if you look at interest in Gab uh, as a thing, a lot more people are now aware that it exists. The thing is that that opens it up for them to join you know, the alt-tech movement. I think that the attempt to deperson them will backfire spectacularly. 
I think that what's going to happen is that these alt tech firms are going to begin partnering with other, you know, uh, societal lepers, like you might see like Infowars partner directly with alt tech or something to bring their content to a larger audience. It is beginning to happen. The biggest stumbling block in the way of alt tech truly taking off is, is app gatekeeping by two companies. You have a duopoly within the tech world for smartphone usage, which is another reason why I prefer not to use smartphones. I don't want to take part in a duopoly when it comes to everything interesting that's not manually something that you uh, search for. Uh, and that's Apple and, and Google, really. 98% of all app store uh, action <laughs> between two companies. And then Microsoft's like 1.5%, and then everything else is like, you know, maybe some Russian app store or something. Uh, so it really is, it's, it's a monopolistic uh, feature of the internet, the way it is in modernity. It's unfortunate, but it is something that's being slowly uh, peeled back. Gab is definitely on the forefront of that. Gab and Mines and BitChute are the big ones uh, that are really beginning to make inroads. And then there are, there are new payment processors starting to rise up. These sites are beginning to tinker with additional functionality and also Eventually, you're going to see that the force of the free market is a wonderful thing. And, and while free markets aren't absolute, like you have a lot of monopolization on the internet, you do still have a kernel of a free market there that's considerably more advanced than in the normal brick and mortar commercial world. And what you're going to see is eventually you're going to get hyper libertarian style domain hosting where they're actually competing to be like more pro free speech. Um, you're going to see like super libertarian payment processing where they're like, hey, if it's not flat out illegal, we do not give a shit. And you're going to see an, a decreasing reliance. Ad revenue web wide is already declining. The ad based internet is already dying off. Alt tech is in a perfect position to take advantage of that fact because it's tying into things like cryptocurrency, blockchains, uh, mesh networks, and all of the other innovations that are being made. If you're not on GAM, and you're not as well on Mines and, and BitChute, Steam at some of these other sites, I would say you're making a big mistake by not using these, these technological platforms. These are the future of technology. Even if all of these sites were to get swept aside in a massive, massive deplatforming effort, Silicon Valley and the corporate media slam down tighter than a fucking bear trap and just wipe them off the face of the earth, something else would rise up and it would be more powerful than before. It's a, it's a sort of evolutionary uh, purification, if you will. It's the slow march of technological progress, which will inevitably favor free speech, uh, I believe, over time. That's about all. Peace out.